The following episode describes graphic details of violence and murder. Listener discretion is advised. It's Friday, September 7th, 2007. Earlier in the week, a hunter checking on the condition of his tree blind for the upcoming deer hunting season discovered the remains of 35-year-old Lineda Oliveira, about 200 yards in the woods off Route 122 in Rutland, Massachusetts. Lineda is the fifth woman in recent years that went missing from Worcester's main south neighborhood, only to have her skeletal remains discovered in a wooded area months after they went missing. The discovery of Lineda's remains prompts criminal profiling organization Stalk Inc. to release a profile on a possible serial killer in the Worcester and central Massachusetts area. Described as a predator, Stalk profiled the serial killer as a man local to the area between the ages of 28 and 41 who works in construction or maintenance, is a fisherman hunter, and drives a truck or SUV. He enjoys pornography. The man is a psychopath. He suffers from relentless anxiety and paranoia. He likely has a rap sheet that includes assaults, breaking and entering a DUI, narcotics possession. He may even be a drug dealer. He's likely a heavy smoker with a history of alcohol and drug abuse. His childhood was likely marred by physical and sexual abuse and he blames his mother for the abusive situation. He frequents areas of prostitution and is well known by sex workers in the Maine South area. He may be known to prefer sex outdoors. He's arrogant, a compulsive bragger, and likes to tell anyone who will listen about his fishing and hunting exploits. He is addicted to killing. This suspected serial killer is officially dubbed the Maine South Woodsman. Unsolved Worcester is brought to you by the following sponsors. Follow the crowd through the doors of Donut Homies and say hi to Haley Noel, the Donut Queen of Worcester's Canal District. Donut Homies is open inside the Worcester Public Market at 160 Green Street every Wednesday through Sunday at 11 a.m. Online ordering with delivery and pickup options is available at DonutHomies.com. Follow Donut Homies on Facebook and Instagram for monthly menu drops, specials, and more. Donut Homies, everything sweeter with the homies. Welcome back to Unsolved Worcester. I'm your host, Dan Yeager. This is the final episode of Season 5 of Unsolved Worcester, and it's Part 2 of our two-part episode special on the alleged Worcester serial killer known as the Maine South Woodsman. In today's episode, we will explore the profile of the woodsman further, how a person of interest is connected to the deaths of five of the Maine South Woodsman's victims. Carmen Rudy, Dinelia Torres, Betzeda Montalvo, Wendy Morello, and Lineda Oliveira, and how that possible suspect was convicted in the murder and rape of another woman from October 1996. Unsolved Worcester takes a deep dive every Tuesday into the unsolved murders and missing persons cases under investigation by the Worcester Police Department's detective unit. Our goal is to remind residents of the Worcester area, both past and present, that there are dozens of unsolved homicides and missing persons cases that need resolution. We hope we can be the spark needed to solve a case. Be sure to visit the Unsolved Worcester Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and listen to all episodes for free at unsolvedworcester.com and on your favorite podcast streaming platforms. Check out the video for this episode with exclusive aerial views and more on our Unsolved Worcester YouTube page. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. A 
A large part of the problem in the investigation into the murders of the five victims of the Maine South Woodsman was how many local law enforcement organizations were involved and how spread out and separated each investigation was. The murder investigations of Carmen Rudy, Dinelia Torres, and Betzeda Montalvo were all, and are all, being handled by the Middlesex County District Attorney's Office and the Marlboro and Hudson Police Departments. Wendy Morello's murder was being investigated 100 miles north by the Maine State Police. Rutland Police were assisting the Worcester County District Attorney's Office and Massachusetts State Police detectives in the murder of Lenata Oliveira. At least initially, investigators believed the murders of Wendy and Lenata weren't connected to the three bodies discovered in Marlboro and Hudson. They were investigating those two deaths as isolated cases. However, John Kelly, a criminal profiler and president of Stock Inc., told the Telegram and Gazette in September 2007 that he believed the Maine South Woodsman intentionally dumped the remains of Lenata Oliveira in Rutland to throw the investigators off. For Wendy Morello, according to Kelly, dumping her body in Maine in a plastic trash bin in the woods near a residential neighborhood could have been done intentionally to make the impression the serial killer wasn't from the area or was leaving town. And aside from physical and other similarities of all five victims, small, dark hair, the drug problem, and working as prostitutes in Worcester's Main South, each of the locations where the victims' remains were found also shared similarities. Each victim's remains were found in the woods, and each near a lake or pond, giving Kelly the impression that the killer was a hunter. Kelly told the TNG the Maine South Woodsman is the ultimate hunter and predator, and he's been able to hunt his victims perfectly because he hasn't been caught. Coming up in May 2008, about eight months after Lenata Oliveira's body is discovered, authorities name a person of interest in the Maine South Woodsman serial killer case. In the spring of 2008, 38-year-old Alex Sesny of Berlin was being held without bail in Worcester County Jail and House of Correction after being accused of raping a woman one year before at the Reservoir Motel in West Boylston. And after state police crime lab matched Sesny's DNA to samples from a 1996 rape and murder of 39-year-old Teresa Stone in Fitchburg, Sesny would not only become a person of interest in the Fitchburg murder, but the Worcester County District Attorney's Office named Sesny a person of interest in the murders of the five Maine South Woodsman victims. Like the five victims we've highlighted, Teresa Stone also worked as a prostitute. According to the Middlesex County DA's office, investigators had been looking at Sesney since 2003, when the remains of Carmen Rudy and Betsada Montalvo were discovered near the Hillside School on Robin Hill Street in Marlboro. In 2000, Sesney's listed address was 217 Robin Hill Street a one-bedroom cottage owned by the Hillside School. The home is on the same grounds near where Carmen and Betzeda's remains were found. Sesney's father worked the grounds at the school, but Hillside School officials told reporters that they didn't believe Sesney had ever lived there. Sesney worked for his family's construction company, and by 2008 his listed address was 225 West Street in Berlin the same address as the construction company. He had a long criminal record dating back to 1996 that included multiple assaults and attempted rapes on women. In September 2008, Sesney was found not guilty of rape and attempted murder in the allegations from the West Boylston Motel case. He was found guilty on assault and battery charges and sentenced to 18 months in prison. 
That same month, Sesney was indicted by a grand jury in the 1996 Teresa Stone case. According to the Telegram Gazette, court records showed Sesney lived in Fitchburg in 1996 when Teresa's body was found on the side of the road. In March of 2012, a Worcester County grand jury convicted Sesney of murder in the first degree and aggravated rape in connection with the murder of Teresa Stone. He was sentenced to life in prison without a chance of parole. Sesney was found guilty of murder in the first degree under all three theories, deliberate premeditation, extreme atrocity or cruelty, and felony murder. Sesney appealed the court's decision in 2015, but the first-degree murder conviction was upheld. The court overturned the aggravated rape charge and dropped the theory of felony murder. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts argued that Sesney had sex with Teresa Stone, but then strangled her to death. The injuries on Teresa's face, arms, and thighs also likely prove she had been beaten. Shortly after Sesney's 2012 sentencing to life in prison, Worcester County District Attorney Joe Early confirmed that Sesney remained a person of interest in the Maine South Woodsman killings. Nearly 20 years later, after the remains of Carmen Rudy and Betsaida Montalvo were discovered in Marlboro, and more than a decade since Alex Sesney's sentencing in the 1996 murder of Teresa Stone, Sesney remains the only person of interest named in the Maine South Woodsman serial killings. No charges have ever been filed in the deaths of Carmen Rudy, Betsaida Montalvo, Dinelia Torres, Wendy Morello, or Lineda Oliveira. Their murders all remain unsolved. Thank you for listening. I'm Dan Yeager. Don't miss another episode. Click the notification button to get alerts when new episodes of Unsolved Worcester drop. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please consider clicking the like button for us. And if you subscribe, the next episode will show up in your feed. Click the bell on the right and select all, and you'll get a notification of when the next episode is ready. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. We do read them all and respond to as many as we can. Anyone with information about the murders presented in this episode are asked to contact the Worcester Police Detective Bureau at 508-799-8651 or send an anonymous text at 274-637. Write TIP WPD plus your message or send an anonymous web-based message at worcestermagovernor forward slash police. Listeners with information on the murder of Wendy Morello can contact the Maine State Police at 207-624-7076. Listeners with information on the murder of Lineda Oliveira can also reach out to Massachusetts State Police detectives assigned to the Worcester County District Attorney's Office at 508-453-7589. Or send an email to WorcesterDA Unresolved at Mass.gov. Please come back this fall for the start of the sixth and final season of Unsolved Worcester. Tune in later this week for a special intermission episode with Jordan Sears, founder of Cold Case New England, as she shares her thoughts with us on the Maine South Woodsman serial killings. Special thanks to Worcester Public Library, the Worcester Police Department, the City of Worcester, and our sponsors for making this possible. Information on the Maine South Woodsman murders of Carmen Rudy, Denelia Torres, Betzeda Montalvo, Wendy Morello, and Lineda Oliveira, as well as the conviction of Alex Sesney, was gathered from multiple resources, including the Telegram and Gazette, the Worcester County District Attorney's Office, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Court System, Mass Live, Cold Case New England, Stalk Inc., Patch.com, Maine State Police, 
WMTW8 in Portland, the Portland Press Herald, News Center Maine, SeacoastOnline.com, and more. The Unsolved Worcester podcast music is provided by Tom LaBelzik of the Worcester Jazz Collective. This episode is written and produced by Pat Sargent. Drone footage provided by Ron Scott at Chasing Daylight Studio. Videography and editing by Colin Turner. Sponsorship information announcer, Chandler Walsh. This program is supported in part by a grant from the Worcester Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts. Find out more about how National Endowment for the Arts grants impact individuals and communities. Visit www.arts.gov.